the ice. Why is it so big? So it doesn't melt. It's actually really interesting how they do it. It's this one company out in Boston that... Hello, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Christy, this is Ben. Our special guest star, Robert Abley, is here to join us to talk about A Million Ways to Die in the West, because we need more Seth MacFarlane. We need live action Seth MacFarlane. Please describe it to us. This is uh, Seth MacFarlane sort of as a 21st century Bob Hope, a little bit. You yeah. know, pale face, son of pale face. He's deathly afraid of everything that makes the West the West. Uh, he has no courage, uh, but maybe in the end he does. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's all about, uh, this is uh, set in uh, Frontier, Arizona, 1882. Seth MacFarlane, uh, as I said, he hates the West. That's funny to me right off, right at the beginning. There are a couple of repetitive lines about the, the things that are the, the, <laughs> about the things that are wrong with the West, but nonetheless, uh, still funny. Uh, and then eventually, uh, after getting dumped by his girlfriend right in the beginning, he takes up with, uh, he doesn't necessarily take up with, but he is drawn to Charlize Theron, who is secretly married uh, to the most dangerous outlaw in the West, Liam Neeson. The American West is a terrible place in time. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Angry, drunk people, hungry animals, outlaws. I would like to welcome a new member to our community. Welcome to our awesome town. What's with this fair? Every year, people die. Really? Everybody hold still. Oh! 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 Hold still! So, does liking Family Guy help here? Does liking Ted help here? I think so. I think uh, if yeah. you like his sense of humor and throwing everything in a wall and seeing what sticks and the prolonged non sequiturs and I, whatever, I that helps. I don't, but I don't love this the way I, I loved early Family Guy. I love Ted. I don't love this. I laughed quite a bit, but it's like, it's just so messy and I, so self-indulgent. I know what you're saying. I don't think you do him justice. I don't think this is comedy where you throw everything in the wall and Steve's with six. There's I think it's so many fart jokes. There weren't so many. There were too many. There's a good half dozen. Okay, well, it's a two-hour movie. There's a. Uh, <laughs> he spreads uh, them out. Yeah, it's almost like it's uh, almost like he thought like if Mel Brooks got away with one big fart joke, right. I'm going to spread it out over like, the right. course of the entire movie. Uh, right. right. Uh, but again, here's the thing. You know, I hate the scatological humor as much as you do. Yes. Um, they in. I say this all the time. In Bridesmaids, it was contextual. <laughs> like it was <laughs> part of the poop. story, yeah. and it therefore became funny to people who don't like that kind of thing. There is a moment here where this goes from being not funny in a traditional way that I don't find this stuff funny, to doing one little thing in the biggest scatological scene that made it to me. This is the thing fun. with the hand? The thing with the hand and that's the hat. Actually, that's actually yeah. a Family Guy joke. That's what, <laughs> okay, well, I, I've, I've watched five episodes of Family Guy in my life, and I like it, yeah. but I don't, I don't, but it's funny. But also, yeah. well, it's because Neil Patrick Harris is funny. I mean, like, here's the, I mean, right, that's I, the other I, thing, right. I, I like Neil Patrick Harris in this movie because I, my problem with movies like this is like when the jokes don't work, you have nothing else to hang on. And I think a movie like this needs, actually, weirdly enough, that sounds weird to say, you need characters that you find interesting. I mean, like, and I just don't think the characters and the behavior of the people in this movie is funny enough so that when you aren't laughing at jokes, you're laughing. I mean, so Neil Patrick Harris, because he's really good at, at being funny behaviorally, he can make something like an extended scene of him, like, you know, pooping his guts out basically into a hat, funny by doing a, th a thing, like a bit, a right, little right. actorly bit. I mean, he, he did that enough so that I could laugh at him outside of jokes that didn't land. Right, but I, I, that said, I don't think they throw everything away. I think it was incredibly sophisticated. I think it is the, the highest brow of brows. Here there's and there no, it was there sophisticated. There is no story in this movie. I mean, there's no interesting story in this <laughs> but movie. But I mean, it's, it's a story, it, it, I mean, then there's no really interesting story in Red River. I mean, it's just, that's about a cattle drive. This is about a guy trying to, you know, he's got to fight with the biggest out Outlaw and I, I, mean, I mean, no, it is not much more story than the Bob Hope westerns. It isn't. But that said, to me, it's incredible. Uh, you know, uh, I, look, it comes down to I thought the jokes worked. I'm yeah, convinced no. of it, and I thought they worked really well. I thought this was incredibly similar to Ted in tone and feel, and to those few Family Guy episodes that I've seen mm -hmm. that I think are very funny. But whenever you think of Ted, I mean, Ted had a gimmick that you kind of thought was interesting. I mean, the, the teddy bear and the man. I mean, that is like a situational, that yeah. is a funny situational uh, a setup that you can mine. I mean, I, I, I think Ted knew that, so that it, it could like build on that. 
And I think there's just nothing here situationally to build on. It's like one thing to another to another to another. And there's, exactly. loose, there's loosely him learning how to handle a gun. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. And the, the dollar joke is amazing. The the dollar dollar joke. Everyone's, everyone's yeah. like excited because somebody's, they, no one's ever seen a dollar. So Here's, it's like, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's not it's on amazing. the same level as Ted, what I'm about to say, but the, because you're right, that situationally is just funny. I don't know the yeah. way I sing the Thunder Buddies song now. I don't know that I'm going to take anything like that away from a million ways down the list. But I love the decision by, also, he, he looks like he doesn't have to shave. I mean, he is the <laughs> least Western looking character you could mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And then Charlize Theron comes in as the primary co-star here. And they don't, they do, a, I think, a very refined thing here. They don't speak like it's the West right. in any way, nor do they speak like it's 2014 and they've been transported to the West. They just talk normally, and it they and they use things that didn't exist then. What they have the advantage of is that it's like it's what if we put two people with reason in Frontier it's, Arizona in 1882? And to me, that gimmick, not on the level of a of of, of a talking teddy bear and his buddy, uh, that really worked for me almost every time. I loved how they talked to each other. Yeah, no, the, I, the, yeah. Oh, sorry, no, no, the, the anachronism uh, works the entire way through. I think a lot of that has to do with Charlize Theron. It's a rare yeah. chance for her to be funny, right? You look at her in something like, like those those Arrested Development episodes she did, or you look at her <laughs> in. Um, a young adult, she gets to be mean, yeah, right. funny. Yeah, um, this is this was is a rare. One, that was one of the movies where she had a sex scene with Pat Oswalt, right? <laughs> <laughs> so many. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, it's it's refreshing to see that. But she elevates him. He's he's one note. He as a live action actor, he's one note all the time. She brings out shadings in him and makes him. Almost, it makes it almost believable that she would fall for him. Every time That's I think how good the, she is. Every time I think about the movie, though, like you're like, yeah, I guess he's one note, but it's a good note. You know, it's a it's a it's a well harmonized note. Mm -hmm. You're comparing him to like like you know, it's the Bob Hope. You know, Woody Allen. Woody Allen does the same thing right. where he's himself in a in a no in a, form, in a, in a is, old yeah. you know in a in a situation and from the past. And uh, Mel Brooks did this. And, Mel, and Mel Brooks yeah. has done it a few times. And you just mm -hmm. it's, he's just not as I mean, it's just not as. I think he's. Good. I think he is. I think it. when he when he's good, I think he's on that level. I think the fact that he and there's a scene in a you know a, a bar fight and the saloon breaks out and he and Giovanni Ribisi, who's his buddy, the fake the fake, yeah. the, the fake writing so that nobody will fight with them like oh we're really going at it I, I, that's really good oh. the Sarah Silverman G, Giovanni Ribisi idea that she's a hooker who sleeps with ten to fifteen guys a day but she's like and then when she sees him she's like honey and they don't care like it's that's good to that me. is that, not good that that's a waste good. of Those them were, both yeah. the only thing that's good about that is that the the subversion of religion I like that there's yeah. a whole streak in yeah, here that's what, that's of, part of Christianity what, and religion in general but the thing with them I think it's a total waste of Sarah Silverman to make her the hooker with a heart of gold absolutely it, it, she wasn't but she's not a hooker with a heart of she gold is, she is though yeah but she's dim witted yeah. like she's simple there no, that, that is the hooker with a heart of gold she's I mean, sweet yeah because she's sweet to him yeah I mean right but 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 she is clueless as to the issue like that's not just the hooker with a heart of gold who sort of is you know, is almost to me carrying it on her back. Like I gotta make money. This is how we do it. But I love you and I care about you. She's like, they're oblivious that she's having anal sex with a guy upstairs <laughs> and everybody can hear it. And then she come down and she's like, baby, and he's like, honey. Mm -hmm. I, I think it works. That but made, they made go to that. They go to that joke. Yeah, yeah. They went to it a couple often. more times. I mean, but it like, was yeah. the first. The first two were funny, and then she's mm -hmm. funny at the end. Um, I laughed quite a bit. I laughed a lot, but like, it's still, it's dumb and meandering. Yeah, see, I snickered more than laughed, so which is why. Guffaw, right. Ben guffawed. Yeah. I think it was reckless abandon. So, so what are your numbers then? You like uh, it more I'm than eight point two. I mean, you know, for for what it is, for a for a for a comedy, it takes all these things <laughs> that in 1882 that 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 people took as gospel, right? And to me, it tra that translates. Like, how many things are we getting wrong now? So I thought it sort of had a a. a a subversive political message, uh, and I thought it was incredibly funny. So I'm very comfortable with an 8.2. You sound like you feel the need to defend your 8.2. Like, like I'm giving an 8.2 and I'm okay with well, that. Well, I didn't, I thought, I thought, <laughs> no, no, because I thought, I say, no, I don't mean that. I, don't, I feel like defending it because I feel like defending the movie. I see, mm -hmm. I thought, I honestly came out of it, I'm, I was wrong in thinking <laughs> that other people would like, would like it. it yes. I thought it was like, you know, I'd be on the high end of people who were like, hey, this was funny. I thought the reaction to this would be similar to the reaction to Ted, and it clearly is. Yeah, um, I'm giving it a six. I'm giving it a 3.2. So. Whatever. Um, you don't like fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think he directed jokes well. Um, um, so he, he telegraphed jokes. 
ahead no, of time. You left. You know, don't, 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 don't defend yourself against my, <laughs> I'm not against my haymaker punch two. at the end of the review. Right, <laughs> so 5.8 is our average. 5.8, and, uh, and, and they're right on Robert. Uh, it's at 34% actually right now on, uh, on the mm -hmm. tomato meter. Bye.